All right, Pa, five o'clock. Time to lock up. We're closed. Come on, Daryl, let me in. I just need a spot book. Come back tomorrow. We're closed. Great, Pa. That pest, Skippy. Doesn't he know we're closed? Oh, he knows. He just doesn't care. You know he ain't just gonna get that spark plug and leave. He's gonna be hanging around here for hours. Ah, well, what should we do? We're just gonna have to wait him out. What? That could be ours. Ah. Terrell, I know you're in there. I can hear you breathing. Eh. Well, maybe if we can make it to the house, we'll be home free. Come on, Terrell, I just want a J19 LM, and then I'll be on my way. Eh. Nobody's here, Skip! Go away! What's the matter? Don't you want to make any money? Eh. Come on, Pa! Quick! This way! I see you here. Hey, where you going? Aerodactyl here. And today we're going to do another engine swap. This time we're going to do it on this here Toro Proline 36 inch walk behind mower. It had a 17 horse Kawasaki Kai engine on it, which was a rope start engine. It was a rope start. And the motor is just wore out. Landscaper guy just wore it out. We pulled one of the heads off and cylinders all wore and it was just smoking like crazy. And right now the poor thing's sitting on the floor bleeding out. So it's done. That's all right. That's all right, buddy. It's time to go now. It's time to go to the scrapyard in the sky. So I called my friend Elkskins, and I said, hey Elkskins, got any used engines I could put on this pro line? He said, yeah, I got a 17 horse single cylinder Briggs, the older overhead valve motor, the good one, before they made that intact. So this is what Elkskins brings me, this Briggs with the mouse nest in it and oil all over it. So first thing we're gonna have to do is get it cleaned up, get that nest out of there, and then we're gonna mount it to my test frame. Some of you might have seen my test frame before, and then we're gonna see if it runs. And if it runs, then we'll clean up the pro line and mount the motor on it, and then I've got a uh, mount a battery and a key switch and a solenoid because that other motor was rope start and this electric start. So we're gonna convert it to that. So stay tuned. Okay, we got the motor mounted to my test frame. We got the gas hooked up. And what we're gonna do now is see if this solenoid works. If we can hear it clicking. So you have to find the gray wire that's in the harness. And then we're gonna, and we've hooked a little jumper to it. Now I know it looks white, but this is a gray wire actually. And we're gonna touch it to 12 volts on the battery. Hook our ground up. I'm gonna ground it to the, to the muffkin pipe. You can ground it to wherever you can get good ground. Let's see if we can hear it clicking. And we don't. I don't hear nothing. So let's take it off. Got to have a special wrench. I took a half inch wrench and ground it down thin. You need a thin wrench to get in here. It's probably all gummed up. 
Well, we got gas coming through. Let's see if this thing works. Nothing. Dead. Looks like it's stuck in the down position. Now another thing you're gonna wanna do is put a new plug in it before you try to start it. So we took the existing plug out, the one that was in there, and this is gonna tell you how the engine is running. And if you look at this one, it's not all carboned up, it doesn't have a lot of carbon residue on it, so that tells me that this motor was running pretty good. So we're gonna put a new plug in it, we gapped it, 30 thousandths. Like I said, this looks like it's stuck down. It should be sticking up, so when you put 12 volts to it, it sucks itself up and down. So it's in the open position. So we'll just screw it back in. I'll find a bowl nut to go in there, or maybe I've got one of these, a good one, from another mower. We'll see if this carburetor is even any good. It's got that Nikki, Nikki 6 carburetor on it. Maybe I can find a wall row to put on there. Let me turn the gas back on. Here's our throttle. There's full choke. So I'm going to take my 12 volts from my battery and I'm going to go right to the starter. And we're going to choke it, see if it'll start. See if elk skins give me a good motor. Cranking hard and not fast enough. All right, so I'm gonna pull the valve cover off next and check the valves. I'm gonna check the valve clearance. Maybe it's not bumping the compression release. All right, I pulled the valve cover off. I got the exhaust valve fully open, and it's pretty sloppy, the intake. So 10 millimeter on this one, and what is this, a T15 I'm going to use Torx in here to set the valve. So you want to back out the Torx a little bit. Put your 4,000s feeler gauge. Now I know Briggs says you should have four on the intake and six on the exhaust. Well, I set them both at four. Never had a problem. Been doing it for years. Nobody's ever came back. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, turn it over. Have the intake fully open. See what we got on the exhaust. Pretty sloppy. Back off the nut. Back out the torques a little bit. Put our feeler in. Turn the nut in until we get some resistance. Stop, turn in the torques, tighten down the nut a little bit. That's a little too tight, so I'm gonna wanna back it off. There we go. Turned in the, turned in the, backed off the nut a little bit and I turned in the torques in the middle a little. Got some slippage. Snug down the nut a little, and that feels good. And we'll hook the battery back up and try it again. That valve cover gasket was leaking. You can see it's all sucked in here. That's probably where a lot of the oil leak was coming from. Plus, it's all brittle. So we'll put a new one of them on. 
We filled the oil, I forgot to mention that. You always wanna make sure, that's probably the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, make sure it's full of oil. And then I got rid of that stupid quick drain thing and I put a, a 3 8 pipe plug in there because the oil was leaking out. So now we'll put the battery on and see if how it cranks now. If it still cranks hard, then this starter's probably bad. All right, I put a new valve cover gasket on and bolted that back on. And then I hooked up a jumper kill wire so we could kill it. And if you want to know which one that is, that's this black wire here. This black wire that runs up underneath the shroud, that's going to the coil. So I got that hooked up in case it runs and I need to shut it off right away. Which I doubt it's going to run, the condition it was in. So we're going to try to start it and see if will it run on its own. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to shoot a little carb spray in the carburetor. And then if it runs and dies, then I know the carburetor's bad. If I spray some in there and it doesn't do anything, then the next thing I would do would check for spark to see if it's got any spark. Because maybe the coil's bad. And like I said, if it cranks slow still, then this starter's probably bad. So let me put it on choke and see what happens. smoking fired right up I mean it looked worse than it was but a lot of times that's how these motors are you're looking at it it's all full of mouse nest and oil and crap all over you think this motor's probably junk and it turned out to be a good motor so we know it runs so now somebody's here probably a fan so now we're gonna have to take the motor and mount it on the uh, on the Toro That'll be next. Now it looks like somebody welded this little piece of flat stock here like a diverter. You can tell that's not factory because of the way it's welded. It looked like a little kid welded it. But probably a little kid probably could have welded it better than whoever welded that. So I'm gonna have to cut and grind that off now because it's interfering with the motor. All right, holes line up. So they allowed for the footprint on this one to accept this Briggs motor. Now in case you're wondering, date code on this is 01. So this is a 2001. And it was on a Craftsman. And we're going up a little in horsepower, but that ain't gonna matter. This is a little, little mower, 36 inch or 38 inch deck. And then we gotta find a spot to mount the battery. That's gonna be a challenge because this one's a rope start. So I'll go ahead and bolt this on, put the pulleys on underneath, hook up all the belts, and then we'll run our new fuel line. And we got a muffkin, we gotta do the muffkin. Probably gonna have to bolt a muffkin on the side here somewhere. Maybe I can find a muffkin somewhere or I might have to fabricate something. But let's get it bolted in and all the pulleys and that hooked up. All right, now we need to put a muffkin on this thing. But the only muffkin I could find was this one. Say hi, muffkin. 
There's my baby girl Muffkin. <laughs> no, I found the Muffkin out in my junkyard. Right here. That's why you gotta have a junkyard. So I got this little adapter and this muffkin bolts to this, bolts to there, and the other end bolts to the engine block. So this is a muffler for this. And I just happen to have one in the junkyard and I just gotta put a little turnout on there to point it away. Then, I got them out the battery. So what I'm thinking I might do is weld this pipe to the frame here and then I got me a plastic battery box off a junk mower. That's why I got all these junk mowers that I rob parts off of. So I'm going to think I'm going to mount the battery like right here over this wheel. And then it'll be out of the way of the muffkin. And then I can put my solenoid and my cables will be close to the starter. And then all I got to do is wire up the ignition switch. So that's what I got to do next. Mount the muffkin. Make me a battery box. I cut my pipes for my battery box that I'm going to mount on the Toro and I have two options you know I could have drilled a hole all the way through and put a nut in the bolt but I wanted to show you my new tool I got my nut cert tool because I know how y'all like uh, tools and what that does is it puts this little nut cert inside the pipe it's for sheet metal and thin thin metal so you can add more threads without having to weld, say like weld a nut on the back side if you wanted to capture something. So I bought this tool from my favorite place, eBay. And it comes with all the different adapters and they give you 10 of each size. Three metric sizes, three American sizes. That was the kit I bought. They have all kinds of kits on eBay, some that are just metric, some that are just standard. And then I also looked on eBay and got me an uh, extra set of inserts because 10 of all those sizes aren't going to be enough for me because I want to use this on the Palomino project too. When I start mounting stuff, I don't want to have to weld nuts on the back, especially little sizes like 1024 and 832, kind of hard to weld those nuts on the back. So, take your drill gauge, because we're going to use quarter inch, and find out what drill bit you're going to use. 2164, And you drill a hole in whatever you're doing. Now I've got this one marked, so I'll go ahead and drill a hole in it, 2164 hole. And you put the proper arbor in there that they give you. They're all marked. This one's quarter 20 we're using. You screw the nuts are on. Stick it in the hole and then you simply move the handles until they stop. Don't try to force it. Just get it till it stops. Release the handles. And voila. Now you got some now you got some treads in there. Now you got about uh, three eighths worth of treads. Some of you may already know about this nutser tool, and some of you may not, because I know a lot of you like tools, and I like tools. It was about $60 for the kit I bought on eBay. So now, I can thread this on. Like I said, I could have just drilled through holes and put nuts and bolts, but I wanted to show you that tool.
Got the battery all mounted. Got the solenoid mounted. Put a key switch in it. Had to wire it up. Had to go out in the junkyard on a, on a junk lawnmower and cut out the other the other end of the plug that goes to this engine. And then I had to move some of the wires around so I could get it to work. And then another thing is, whoever had this lawnmower, they had disconnected all the safeties, took them off, cut all the wires, so there was a bunch of stuff missing, and so there were no safeties on it at all. So I thought, well, I gotta have some kind of safeties on here. So what I did is, there was a switch here for the brake. So I put a normally closed switch in here and since you have a four prong or four terminal solenoid, one of the terminals, one of the small wires is a ground. This solenoid has to be grounded in order for it to start. So I ran the wire from that one solenoid terminal to the back of the switch and then ran the other wire to ground. So what that does is, if you don't have the parking brake on, it won't start. See how that works? And when you have the parking brake on, then it'll crank over. So that was a normally closed switch I used for that. So that way, the parking brake will be on for safety. And then I had to use a SCAG ignition switch because it had to have a terminal on it. When I turned it to the first click, it would energize that solenoid that's on the carburetor. I wanted to put that anti-backfire valve on there. So the one that was on there was bad. So I had a junk one again and put that on there. So I used a lot of used parts to put this thing together. And then another safety I wanted to have is on these handlebars. Because say you're mowing those grass and you trip and fall, this thing is just gonna keep going and cutting because all the safeties were disconnected. So again, there's a normally open switch under here for this handlebar. And I had to take it out and use another normally closed switch, which I wired into the ignition switch. So one's going to the magneto wire and the other wire's going to ground again. So that way, when you start this now, you have to have your hand on the handlebar, you have to have the parking brake on, and then you can start it. And as soon as you take your hand off of this, it'll die. So in case they're mowing along and I'm, oh, I tripped and fell, and the lawnmower keeps going and runs over the neighbor's dog and runs into their car. And so got some, some type of safety on there. And then I cleaned it. I sprayed it down. So it doesn't look half bad. You know, this is turd polishing 101. I put all new bushings in the front because they were all wore out, these brass bushings. And then this caster was bent, so I heated, had to heat it up and bend it, and the top of it was bent, this pin. And then I greased the wheels and greased the caster. It had good blades on it, sharpened the blades. Um, spindles were good. When I was putting the motor back on, I noticed that the pump belt for the hydro pumps was bad. And uh, pulley was starting to make noise, so I thought I'll just put a new pulley on. Ran all new fuel line, new fuel filter, put an inline shutoff in there, changed the oil, put a new air cleaner in it, new plug. We set the valves, you saw that. So a lot of used parts, uh, very few new parts. Now the last thing we got to do is hook up the throttle. The throttle cable's real long. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. 
All right, so figure about right here, I'm gonna cut the cable. So I'll give me some side cutters. And I'm not gonna cut all the way through. I'm just gonna cut into the cable. And then I'm gonna find the end right there. And with the tip of these cutters, I'm gonna cut through that. Gotta be kinda careful when you do that. See if I can spread it out a little better. You don't wanna cut through the inner cable. You just want to get the tip. Come on. You gotta have a good pair of side cutters. There we go. See? Now I'll cut the Z off the end, the Z bend. And we'll slide that off. Alright, now let's see. Where's our throttle? What position? Alright, that's all the way out. I got the wire all the way out all the way this way and then we'll put it about here and then we want to go a little bit past to allow for the Z bend it's going to take up a little so we'll cut it right there Boing! then we got our Z bender bend it out towards me spin it Bend it back. There you go. Perfect Z bend. Now that, that ends a little long. I'll trim it back a little bit. Makes it easier to get in that pocket. Now we'll bring it back so we can get it in there. Come on. All right. Now I got to get a torx. To open up that clamp. There we go. Now, all the way back is choke. So let me put it all the other way. Want to go on the choke side. Stick that under there. We got full choke. That was another thing I failed to mention. This, uh, Choke shaft was sticking too on this motor. I had to take that out and clean it. It's got that plastic choke shaft. So the choke was staying stuck. So I had to take that out, clean it. I took a Scotch Bright pad to the shaft, to the choke shaft. There we go. There's full choke. There's off choke right there. High speed. There's idle. All right, so let's uh, fire it up and uh, check and make sure the charging system's working. Make sure I got that hooked up right. Now on this particular Briggs motor, we got a red and orange wire coming from under the flywheel. The red one is the charge wire and the orange one is like for headlights, AC voltage. So this is your DC voltage, which is gonna charge the battery and the orange is for headlights. Now if you look in this harness, see there's no pin in the orange side because we're not using headlights. On this plug that I stole off a junk mower which had the fuse and everything in it, you'll notice there's a blue wire with a red wire that jumps to the side here. Now that red wire it's coming from the alternator and then it jumps over to this blue wire and then the blue wire comes out and goes up to the key switch now on the other end of this plug there's no wire coming out so basically all we're doing is jumping this red wire to the blue wire and the only reason I did that is because that's how it was in the plug if you want, all you have to do is just run a red wire. Now the reason I ran the blue wire back to the key switch is that CAG, CAG, that SCAG key switch I used, it's got an R on the back of it. And R stands for rectifier. So I can run that wire back to the key switch and it'll send the voltage back to charge the battery. If you wanted to, if you've got one of these, 
All you would have to do is run this red wire that's coming from the alternator either to the solenoid, to the side of the solenoid that goes to the cable that goes back to the battery, which would be this one, or you could run that red wire right to the battery to charge it. But since that key switch I, I used had that R on it, I thought I would just run that blue wire there because I stole all these wires off a of junk lawnmower, so I figured I'd reuse them all if I could because they had the right ends and stuff on it. We had a regular five. Come over here, Mr. Cameraman. You know, I got the regular five strong plug, and then here's that blue wire. That goes to a separate prong that's marked R on the key switch. And this is that kill wire that's going to that switch here. So we basically got a battery wire, power wire, this one with the little white piece of tape, this black wire, that goes to the solenoid to start it for starting. So when you turn the key, this sends 12 volts to the solenoid. Uh, this orange wire is for the solenoid on the carburetor. And this other black wire is the magneto wire. This is the kill wire that goes to the coil. And this other black wire here that has nothing on it, that's just the ground wire. That's going right to here, the ground. Because that's what was on the back of this key switch that I used. So remember, if you got a key switch and it's got letters on the back, those letters all mean something. B for battery, S for starter, L for lights, G for ground, R for rectifier, sometimes it'll have an A, which is for like accessory. So that's what I did to wire it. All right, I got my voltmeter, set the DC volt, hooked to the battery. Now this alternator system on this here Briggs, since it came off a of ride mower, got a real low amperage alternator so it takes a long time for it to get up to uh, voltage charging voltage it's real slow it's not like you know one that's got a, a voltage regulator so let's check it out put this sticker on. There, now it's official. Well, we polished another turd with a used engine and uh, everything turned out pretty good. 
went from a rope start to electric start. I'm sure the guy will be happy. And uh, remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Buy our tarot apparel. Ring the bell to get uh, subscription notifications. And there's one other thing. What is it? Oh yeah, there's your dinner. I think the coast is clear. We can make our way to the house. All right, sounds good, Pa. Ah! This guy won't leave, Pa. We should have just sold him the plug. He's here every week buying a spark plug. There's no turning back now. Besides, we're almost home. All right, Pa, let's go. Come on, Terrell, quit messing around. I got a couple of Washingtons with your name on it. <laughs> yes, yes, we made it! Woo! Yeah, yeah! Home sweet home. All right, Junior, looks like he's gone. Woo! Time to celebrate! Yeah! I knew we could dodge him. Grab me a cold one, too, Pop. All right. Oh, thanks. Can I get that RZ12YZ spark plug now, Daryl? How'd you get in here? The gate was unlocked, Daryl. Junior! Sorry, Pa. I forgot. What up on that RN11YZ4?